you know, when we first set this up, we had a very generous uh, donor, and we'll talk a little bit more about that later. Uh, the reason for doing this conference here was because uh, there's a new exhibit that uh, the donor paid for and uh, unbelievably generous. So we said, well, we're, we want to do a, an exhibit reveal, and we'll do it at the museum. And we assumed there was this sort of facility at the museum. We thought it was a little different. But, you know, I'm looking at it, I'm like, it's a classroom. But, you know, upon further reflection, I'm like, you know, maybe that's the perfect place to do a, a thing like this because we are desperate for young people to be, get into this field, right? I mean, no offense, but if you look around, there's a lot more gray hair than dark black hair, right? And so we need to do everything we can to inspire young people to get into this, and especially young people who aren't just, uh, you know, the, the standard issue uh, nuclear engineer types. We need uh, some diversity in there. And that's why this is essentially Generation Atomics Day. You know, I, I, I admire what they do so much, and I just want them to, uh, uh, to have every success in the world. This day, again, is about outreach. It's about growing our communities, you know, so more men, more women, more youth. You know, everyone needs to know about this, and uh, I'm just uh, really grateful that we can entrust this day to the uh, Generation Atomic uh, crew there. Uh, it's very inspiring to see how, how uh, much planning they put into this. And I also want to do some quick thank yous from Thorium Energy Alliance. This couldn't be done without Vince Lukowski, and uh, so let's give him a hand. Uh, the, the whole reason we're here at, at this museum uh, is uh, be, because a uh, long time ago, Joe Bonametti, uh, you know, s inspired us to do this. And uh, so the museum folks have been really great. Ryan Painter, Jim Walther, and uh, all the rest of the museum folks that have been uh, uh, helping us out are our super gold, platinum, thorium level sponsors obviously have heavily, heavily subsidized whatever you guys paid to get in here. So, uh, you know, they're on your table tents and on your programs, Curio especially. I'll just wrap up with, uh, it's been three years, right? 2019, almost exactly three years. Uh, October 5th of uh, 2019 is when we had our last conference. and. Uh, so what have we been up to in the last three years? Just quickly, I'll just blast through this. Uh, this, this, by the way, marks the uh, 15th year Thorium Energy Alliance has existed in some form or another. So in 2007, <laughs> so also because of a generous donor uh, back in 2020, we uh, we completely redid the website and then our email programs and all that. Uh, we paid a lot of money to have the uh, Thorium Encyclopedia developed and uh, we were continuing to improve it. One of the things that I'm uh, incredibly proud of is that uh, we, we basically took over management of the ANS 20.2 definition writing. So that's, uh, oh, this guy, this guy's hitting me with time. <laughs> this is my show, I own this mic. <laughs> That's Reagan quote for you, by the way. So, anyways, uh, doing the ANS 20.2 uh, definition. It's the definition of what a molten salt reactor is, and it's uh, it's supposed to be used because I won't bore you to death, but it's it's a very important piece of work, and it applies directly to what the NRC considers for licensing. It also gave us uh, some really painful insight into what people call consensus building these days and it's uh it's really ugly so uh i think they've you'll hear me speak tomorrow about this but at some point you're like consensus who could be against that but when they weaponize it in order to do the opposite of uh, progress uh, then then there's there's problems so one of the other things we've done in the last three years uh promoting use of thorium outside of a nuclear fuel aspect so there's if you go and look at our encyclopedia, you'll see that there's uh, magthor and thorchrome and different uh, thoriated metals, uh, uh, milking thorium for uh, uh, different medicines, uh, using thorium coatings on lenses and ceramics, 
high temperature thorium ceramics goes on. There were, there were hundreds of commercial uses for thorium up until the 90s and then almost all of them kind of faded out except for like microwave magnetrons and thoriated tungsten welding rods and that's about it. Uh, and so we're trying to bring that back because we need to make a market for thorium to make a market for rare earths, blah, blah, blah. We can get into that later. But uh, that's a big push we've had for the last three years. Uh, we've, we've actually uh, thrown our hat in the ring with uh, Copenhagen Atomics, tried to talk about doing some moon reactor stuff. Uh, nucleation capital, I can't wait for you guys to hear about nucleation capital straight from uh, Valerie's mouth. Uh, it's probably the most exciting and democratic means of allowing individuals to invest in a nuclear future. Uh, we have struggled to do some policy advising during these COVID times. We used to have a bigger presence in Washington, D.C., but COVID ruined a lot of that. But one of the things we want to do is uh, promote uh, production tax credits for a lot of the things we're talking about. We've uh, just recently spent a lot of resources of time and effort on trying to define what the licensing of a thorium repository and a thorium mill would be. Uh, it's an astoundingly complex bureaucratic process. There is, it's not like getting your driver's license, believe me. And uh, we also very proudly have uh, been supporting the work of Synergetic, and I'll speak for just a few minutes tomorrow about Synergetic and what an exciting uh, prospect that they bring about in using nuclear and other carbon-free forms of power to do uh, synthetic uh, drop-in fuels. And then uh, we've been consulting to some companies, I wish I could say who they were, but some pretty high-rent Fortune 500 companies about exactly doing what we spoke about, about uh, commercializing non-fuel applications of thorium. And then uh, we've been doing policy development with the Ammonia Energy Association. I'm on the board of directors for the Ammonia Energy Association, uh, specifically applying nuclear power to making pure green 100% carbon-free ammonia. And uh, that's good stuff. And uh, uh, I also am on the uh, Direct Reduction of Iron Committee for the uh, American Iron and Steel Technology Institute, which is a really, you know, it's this is incredibly boring nerd bureaucratic stuff, but it's actually, you know, this is the sort of meat and potatoes stuff you have to do if you want to totally decarbonize and, you know, reach, change our entire economy. So we work very closely with two organizations called GreenMet and another one called SAFE. I won't even bother getting into what they do, but they're obviously uh, trying to push a, a new economy. And then finally, one of the things that's taken up an astounding amount of effort, like an amount of effort, once you see the exhibit, you'll be like, what? How did that take 10 years? And, <laughs> but <laughs> this last year especially, you know, dragging this exhibit across the finish line after 10 years, woo! You can't believe, you know, we were trying to get artifacts out of Oak Ridge National Lab, but that's like, that's like trying to pull a gold ring off of Gollum's finger. <laughs> I swear to God. And so, <laughs> We, but we, we have to, we have to preserve that, that history. This, this was the unalloyed, unbelievable industrial might of, uh, you know, Cold War America, and they got that MSRE done, and you guys all know the story, but this astounding achievement is destined to be ground into dust, literally, and, you know, it's, we're going to work very hard to preserve that legacy so that, uh, you know, people coming after us can see that we were able to do things quickly, powerfully, and safely, and uh, we can do that again. And so with that, that's enough talking for me. I'm going to hand it over to Carl Pauls, who's been very generous in setting up the streaming system and the uh, syncing up the screens here. And he's gonna give you a little bit of a talk uh, right here.